Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads inaugurates its fall festival of famous musicals by bringing you Sigmund Romberg's enduring success, The Student Prince, starring Gordon McRae and his celebrated guest from the Metropolitan Opera, Dorothy Kirsten. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and the music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight another memorable musical is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and the multitude of other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you, Marvin Miller. And good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, Dorothy Kirsten and I are bound for old Heidelberg, where we'll sing all those great Sigmund Romberg melodies from the student prince. <laughs> the days when castles were hung with banners and echoed with the pomp and majesty of kings. These were the days when a crown prince might expect to wear a crown. His Royal and Serene Highness, Crown Prince Karl Franz of Karlsberg. Your Highness. Dr. Engel, what brings you to this dreary palace? I was summoned by your grandfather, the king, to discuss plans for your university education. And I have persuaded him, my boy, that you must go to Heidelberg. Heidelberg? Oh, doctor, I've never forgotten the stories you used to tell me when you were my schoolmaster about Heidelberg and about the River Necker and the student corps and, and how they sang in the evening. And how they sang. And now, Karl Franz, they're going to let you escape from your gloomy castle for a year at least. To be free. To be a student like any other land. Enjoy these days, Karl Franz. For they are the golden days. I know, Dr. Engel. Down where the necker flows swiftly along Nestles the town that is famous Laughing lads roam through its streets so quaint. No one's a sinner, much less a saint. Twilight comes in, and the night shines down, painting with
must come to Heidelberg with me. Why well, should be honored, Your Highness? Good. When can we be off? The sooner the better. <laughs> Glasses for the day? Yeah. Are we dry in the desert in July? Yeah. What do we eat? Yeah. Then we're off to the finest bit of old Heidelberg. To the end we're marching for a road, I'm marching under fruit, we embarking in the month of May. For there's no good fellow when you feel a fellow to the beer, so yellow would they may. Yes, I am. I just arrived. Well, will you join us with some beer? Well, I'd, uh, I'd prefer wine, I think. Wine? What's that? Now, <laughs> <laughs> well, beer is the official drink of our corps. Kathy, uh, beautiful Kathy, bring us some beer. Mind your manners, boys, or I won't serve you a drop. Oh. <laughs> Who's this girl, uh, this Kathy? Oh, she works here at the inn. She's the mascot of our corps. Uh, she's, she's beautiful. Hey, Kathy, come. Come and meet a new admirer. Hello. You've just arrived in Heidelberg? Yes, yes, I have. And I expect to study very hard. Oh, 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 oh tell him, Kathy. Tell this freshman the way we study in Heidelberg. Um, boy, there's no big game, boy. For it's a king, you'd be scientific play, boy. Your time on book, boy, for every fruit suit studies women's love. Oh, 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 Forgive you for treating me as a friend? Oh, now please, while I'm with you in Heidelberg, let me be one of you. Never, Your Highness, only, only Carl Franz. A toast, then, to our new friend, Carl Franz. Thank you. And I should like to drink Kathy's health. <laughs> Kathy, will you please show us to our rooms? I, 
I beg your pardon, Calfran, but it's getting dark. I thought I'd bring you a lamp. Well, that's kind of you, Kathy. What's that music? It's the students singing the serenade. It's beautiful. Have you any more princes at home? <laughs> any more what? Any brothers or sisters? No. The father and the mother, though. They're dead. The king of Carlford. He isn't your father? No, he's my grandfather. I haven't any family either. Oh, poor little Kathy. <sighs> I only hope the Princess Margaret is one half as sweet and as beautiful as you are. The Princess Margaret? Someday she'll be my wife. Don't you know what she looks like? No. I've never met her. You're engaged? And you've never met? Well, that's the way it is with royalty, Kathy. These things are arranged, even before you're born. I'm engaged to a livery stable keeper in Vienna. You love him? I, I don't know. Oh, Kathy. Kathy, darling, I... No, you mustn't. I'd better go now. Good night, Carlson. Kathy. Oh, oh, come in, Dr. Engel. Forgive me, boy, to be called Franz. But may an old friend give you a word of warning. Oh, what warning, Doctor? My boy, I would be very sad if your golden days in Heidelberg were spoiled by uh, an unwise romance. I know, I know. I will not forget that the Princess Margaret must be my bride. <laughs> the months I've been here, I, I, I said to myself, I can't fall in love with her. But every day I love you more. What about the Princess Margaret? I can't go back to the suffocating air of the courts. Kathy, will you marry me? I love you so. The magic of springtime is around us tonight. Enchantment is born on Your Highness. Oh, 
Dr. Engel, I, I can't talk to you now. A message has just come from Carlsberg. Carl Franz, your grandfather is dying. No. You must go to his bedside at once. I've already packed your bags. I, I won't go back. It's your duty, Carl Franz. You must go to your grandfather. He needs you. Oh, Kathy. Kathy. I'll come back to you, Kathy. I, I promise. No. No, he'll never come back. I'll never see him again. Just a moment. Now here is Act Two of the Lawrence and Lee version of The Student Prince, starring Gordon McRae as Carl Franz and his guest star Dorothy Kirsten as Kathy. <laughs> After only four months in Heidelberg, I had to leave my beloved Kathy to return to the court. My grandfather died only a few hours after I reached his bedside. His last request was for me to set a date for my wedding to the princess I had never seen. Her Serene Highness, Princess Margaret Alexia Victoria Eugenie Elizabeth Maria. <laughs> Your Majesty. Your Highness, we have long awaited the pleasure of meeting you, cousin. May I have the favor of a waltz? With pleasure, cousin. You dance beautifully, cousin. It is the duty of a queen to dance well with the king. The princess in my arms was beautiful and proper. She had been schooled since childhood to take her place someday beside me on the throne of Carlsberg. My heart ached to think that my beloved Kathy must be a stranger to my arms from this day forward. I excused myself and retired to my chambers for a night of restless sleep. And I dreamed myself back to Heidelberg again. Golden day. In the sunshine of our happy youth Golden days full of innocence and full of truth And the memories of the gallant times with the student corps flooded back through my mind Longing to lift the stein again with my friends along the banks of the river next to and then I imagined that I saw my cat smiling at me.
I knew what I must do. I had to go back to Heidelberg and keep my promise to Kathy. I beg your pardon. Is there a waitress here named Kathy? I'm Kathy. What can I do for you, ma'am? You were here when the King of Carlsberg was a student. Why do you ask? I am the king's future wife. The Princess Margaret? Does it surprise you that a princess should be jealous? It makes me glad. Because you couldn't be jealous if you didn't love him. I love him very much. And my whole life has been planned toward the day when I shall become his queen. Oh, madame. He has forgotten me. He'll never forget you, Kathy. As long as you're here waiting for him. He's coming back today. Today? Yes. And if you love him enough, you'll go away. So he will think that you've forgotten him. I can't. I, a princess, humbly beg you to give him up. So that perhaps he will return to me. Your Highness, I I will try to do what you ask of me. You are rarely the happier one because you have his love. Well, I can only say that I am grateful to you. They're coming. The student corps. The king will be with them. I must not let him find me here. For oh, the good fellow when he's feeling mellow to the fear so yellow could they make. Kathy! Kathy! Oh, Kathy, darling. Oh, welcome back to Heidelberg, Your Majesty. Hi. Kathy, what's the matter? Life changes, Carl Franz. You were a king. Your life belongs to your people. But your life, Kathy. I... I didn't wait for you, Carl Franz. I promised to marry someone else. Oh, Kathy. Your Majesty? Yeah, yes, my friend. We have just learned of your coming marriage to the Princess Margaret. May your old friends of the student corps wish you every happiness. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. Sing with us again, Your Majesty. One more song. Yes, my friend. I would like to sing the serenade, perhaps, for the last time.
kiss and we'll be back in just one moment. And meanwhile, a word of thanks to our excellent supporting cast, Mary Jane Croft, Victor Rodman, Lamont Johnson, and to our entire company. The student prints with music by Sigmund Romberg and book and lyrics by Dorothy Donnelly was dramatized for the Railroad Hour by Lawrence and Lee. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at the same time by the American Railroad. Marvin? In Louisville, Kentucky, next Sunday, both military and civilian transportation leaders will gather together for the 8th annual meeting of the National Defense Transportation Association, an organization that is helping all America keep its attention focused on one of the basic facts of military strength. And that fact is that the armed forces ride to victory on rolling wheels. There are no wheels more important in this respect than those under trains. For without railroads, modern armies could not even be assembled, let alone equipped. Yes, railroads provide the strong, dependable wheels under our national defense program. Wheels that can be provided only by trains of cars running on tracks. Thank you, Marvin. And now, folks, here again is lovely Dorothy Kirsten. Thank you, Gordon. Gee, it's wonderful to be back aboard the show train. Well, it certainly is a thrill for me, Dorothy, to look across the microphone again and see the glamorous La Kirsten. <laughs> What's on the show train next week, Gordon? Well, from Heidelberg, we're moving to the Mississippi River, Dorothy, for the unforgettable showboat. And if you think we're going to let anybody else but you play Magnolia, you're mistaken, honey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, dear Lord. <laughs> I'll be here next Monday night when the show train meets the showboat. Night, Gordy. Night, Dorothy. You're wonderful. All aboard! Well, dear friends, it looks as if we're ready to pull out. But let me remind you, hire the physically handicapped whenever you can. They are ready, willing, and able to do a good job for you. Until next Monday night and showboat, on behalf of the other members of the cast and of the American Railroad, this is your friend Gordon McRae saying good night. <laughs> The Student Prince has been presented by arrangement with Century Library Incorporated of New York. Gordon McRae can soon be seen in Three Sailors and a Girl in Technicolor. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroad. Now stay tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. This is the NBC Radio Network.